good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Mr. Joseph. Mr. Joseph, how are we doing? Everybody is nice and cold in Cape Town. Welcome, Rain. Don't you think so? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely, Mr. Joseph. Oh, that's great, that's great. I see people in a familiar boardroom there in Newlands, Cape Town. <laughs> that is the uh, people from SAITS. All right, that's great. Good evening, yes. gentlemen. Yes, they are. They are ready for yes. us. We are yes. just waiting for the chairperson to join and we will start as soon as yes. she joins. Yeah. Am I speaking to Zoleka? Yes, this is Zoleka. Hi, Zoleka. This is Zoleka. Molueni, Molueni. Sunjani. The feeling goes Sunjani. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, like, uh, oh, yes, Mr. Mr. Joseph. Now I'm listening to the other gentleman. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, is so like, this is Khalid uh, speaking. This is yes. our first um, virtual meeting with the portfolio committee. Um, yes. So I I'm, um, don't know how the procedure is, but. Uh, I have my, you have my presentation. I assume yes. the committee has my, but I, if you want me to share the screen, I also have, I can also do the presentation like that, uh, whichever okay. way. Okay, all right. I think it's best if you share it yourself and I have made a boardroom, uh, the co-host of the meeting so that you can share the presentation. That is the computer. Boardroom is the computer that you're using. Is that correct? Your laptops. Mr. Khalid. Mr. Khalid. Hmm. Oh, uh, sorry. I was sorry. Is, I was on mute. Yes, boardroom is okay. the computer. Is busy. All right. I have made I have made boardroom the co-host, so you will be able to share your presentation. But if there are any challenges, I will I will do it from my side. But it's best yeah. if you do it on your side. This will stop the other screen. See if I guess I want to do that. Yes, that is fine. But you will have to share when you are about to do the presentation because okay, the so department, I, yeah. you were just yeah, testing. No, okay, yeah, all right. Okay. No, that's fine. Thank you then. Um, yes, we can, we can see you all nice and clear. Thank you very much. What is the exact time? Um, the chairperson, the chairperson has just joined, Mr. Joseph. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Evening, 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 chairperson. Evening, so. Oh, evening, is, no, I'm very sorry. Um, yeah. I wanted that person must finish, and then when I was trying to get in, the network was not allowing me. But now I'm in. My apology with these few minutes. Uh, to the members and to our invitees, uh, honorable members. Um, good evening. Uh, I'm taking this time of the night after so many meetings that we've been uh, attending today uh, to welcome you honorable members and then welcome our invitees the leadership of states who are with us um, i do welcome you after uh, we've been not meeting seeing each other i'm hoping that uh, you are still all alive as you know this um, epidemic uh, it's, it is so vicious. Uh, I'm suspecting that is something is looming off the third wave, which uh, I've seen even the statement of the premier of uh, crowding that uh, he is saying seemingly uh, they can face it, but not 
yet, but the indications. So which means we must keep what we've been doing, all the protocols. Uh, I'm adding this, that one of our staff who I'm suspecting she's very caring. Uh, I was not yet um, aware of what is the disaster management of Western Cape said to, to the people of Western Cape about what happened, the storm. Um, 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 and we have lost about two uh, human beings through this storm and so many destructive things happened. Honorable members, as you are aware that we are preparing, uh, we have asked them to prepare and ask permission that we must go to Robben Island. Jabu uh, this morning, I was not aware that he saw this uh, terrible and horrible thing, was saying that uh, she is cautioning me and I was saying, I cannot reverse a decision of the committee, but uh, let's monitor even if uh, we can get the, um, the permission, uh, we cannot uh, afford uh, to, to lose other lives because this, uh, this epidemic has done a lot to us. So I'm cautioning members that uh, we, we must all of us monitor. Uh, today also, it was a sad day of the remembrance of our own uh, former rugby player who passed on. Uh, we've seen a very emotional, uh, memorial event in KZN. Uh, I'm suspecting uh, again as this committee who also part of uh, the sport saying that condolences to a family of Ulindani Miyeni. Uh, we don't want to remember that most of us were coming from uh, those brutalities of uh, the apartheid government. So it was not nice even to our good selves when we were watching that. Let's be careful. Uh, honorable members, I'm putting the agenda in front of you. Can anyone adopt the agenda? Chair? Sure. Okay. There's some voters calling me. Honorable, hey, Honorable Zondi, I move for the adoption. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Honorable Zondi. Uh, any Mamabulo second. <laughs> thank you, Honorable Mamabulo. Uh, today. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Honorable Members. Um, uh, any apologies? Thank you, Madam Chair. We have an apology from the Minister and the Deputy Minister. They are both attending to long-standing commitments and Ms. Adams as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other apologies? Thank you, Zoom. None. Um, let me take this opportunity to give uh, to the leader of states uh, that she or he must introduce uh, the delegation that are with us. Uh, thank you, honorable members, our staff, which is here today. I'm seeing even our communication person. He is with us. It was so strange when he told me yesterday that he is serving in seven committees. So I was wondering where he is. 
and during our oversight, uh, he was not there, but I'm suspecting it. I'll try to talk uh, to his management. It was, it was not good when we were taking oversight of that nation that we didn't have uh, your communication person. Uh, let me give it to the leader of states uh, to introduce. And at least uh, in Cape Town, if there is a storm, anyone who's going to be introduced must show face. And then if you do experience problem of network, you can switch off your veto. I thank you. Uh, judge, you on mute. Honorable Judge. Your judge Honor, is sir. There we go. And now? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we do. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Lex Party. I am the chairman of uh, the SAIDS board. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you to you and your committee for inviting us to present our annual performance plan. With me, and I hope everybody is connected, is the deputy chair, Mr. Graham Abrams, the CEO, Mr. Khalid Khalant, the CFO, Mr. Onke Mwane, the general manager, Mr. Fahmi Khalant, and then the education manager, Dr. Amanda Klaassen Smithers. Madam Chair, I will ask uh, management to present the annual performance plan, but I must just say that the effect of the lockdown before, restrictions on sport. That, listen, that, um, Honorable our Judge, before that, thank you for yes. introduction of your, your colleagues. Let me first uh, give it to the department. Our DG uh, with the staff of the department are with us. Let's start with them. And then immediately after that, I wanted to check whether you are all here and you don't have any apology. And then after the DG, you will follow. Thank you. Do, Thank we you, have, Chair. do you have any apology, sir? Not from my, well, yes, there's one person who was supposed to be here, uh, Ms. Berg, Wafika Berg. I understand she has a commitment that suddenly came up and so she couldn't make it. That's the only one. I am present, so um, Judge. Judge, I am present. I oh, she's be there. Here. She's there. All right. Okay. Is this beautiful face? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, Afrika. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Honorable uh, the Judge Party. DJ, uh, good afternoon. Uh, that's your time now, DJ. I do welcome you on behalf of the department. Pabu Vosumos. I'm mute. Hey, technology. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this teaching every day you are like this. <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And uh, good evening to all the honorable members, uh, to the chairperson of uh, SAIDS, um, and uh, the honorable, uh, um, His Excellency, the judge, and uh, all the members of the board and the, the leadership, uh, administrative leadership of SAIDS, uh, my colleagues. I am with the, the Deputy Director General, uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, DDG Khan, uh, who is with me uh, in this meeting. And I would request uh, maybe just a brief overview 
I had uh, we shared the responsibilities yesterday was myself. I have asked that today she does just a brief overview, uh, honorable the uh, chairperson and the uh, honorable members, if it is acceptable with uh, the chairperson. Yeah, you must uh, steer your chip. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, um, Chairperson, um, did it you can? Uh, I've got also, I made a mistake. We've got um, a, the, the acting director responsible for entities, and that is uh, Sibusiso Tsanyane. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, you did not say my face looks nice, so I will close the curtain. <laughs> I must close your face, I'm not nice. <laughs> it's not yet, it's not nice face, but you must not forget that it's not easy to you to come back. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ms. Thank Ms. Curry. Thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. Uh, let me acknowledge Madam Chair uh, and the honorable members, uh, the chairperson of SAVES, uh, just Judge uh, Lex and Party, and the board members of SAVES, also the CEO and the management of SAVES, our DG, Mr. Mkise, and uh, colleagues. Um, chairperson, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the South African Institute for Drug Free Sports, SAVES. Uh, because part of our responsibility as a department is not only the funding of SAVES as an organization uh, that looks at anti-doping matters, uh, amongst other, but also to be an oversight over the performance of the entity. Um, can I have the first slide, please, Lulama? Okay. Um, the outline of our presentation very quickly, Madam Chair, is just to go through the mandate, vision, mission, strategic goals, the review of the non-financial performance, the review of the financial performance, the audit outcomes, any governance matters, the composition of the council, uh, the oversight activities, and the composition of the executive management, uh, composition of the staff. And then uh, we've also indicated in the slides, Madam Chair, some of the challenges uh, that uh, SAID has been uh, dealing with. Uh, just quickly, Madam Chair, the mandate of SAIDS is to promote the participation in sport free from the use of prohibited substances or um, methods intended to artificially enhance performance uh, and thereby rendering impermissible doping practices which are contrary to the principles of fair play, medical, medical ethics in the interest of health and well-being of the sports person and to provide any other matters that are related to that. Next slide. Uh, the vision and mission are very clear, Madam Chair. Uh, their vision is to be the custodian of anti-doping matters and ethics in sport, and to actively collaborate with, the, with our African sports colleagues in promoting clean sport. Uh, the mission of SAIDS, as defined by the South African Institute for Drug Free Sport Act number 14 of 1998, as amended in 2005, is to promote the participation in sport free from the use of prohibited substances or methods intended to artificially enhance performance. Next slide. Uh, these are the strategic goals. There are five of them, Madam Chair. I'm not going to read it line by line, but uh, just at a high level, just to uh, indicate uh, to manage financial administration with regard to the applicable legislation and to maintain effective operational infrastructure uh, to ensure that they comply with uh, international standards, and then to implement the national test distribution plan that is informed by the uh, national doping risk assessment, uh, and then also an investigation structure that supports the distribution plan, and then to adhere to the SA anti-doping rules and to the uh, World Anti-Doping Code which uh, all the countries have to sign with the World Anti-Doping Agency and to provide anti-doping education to differentiated target audiences um, and then also to develop anti-doping research topics and themes that will inform uh, the anti-doping education and testing plans 
and to actively participate and contribute to the international anti-doping policy development and capacity improvement. And um, in addition, Madam Chair is to collaborate around common anti-doping themes with international and national partners. Um, with regard to the review of the three-year performance, uh, Madam Chair, we don't have the stats for 2017 and 2018, but I'm sure that um, the colleagues from SAIDS will be able to provide that. But in terms of the achievement in um, 2018 and 2019, they achieved 50% of what they planned to, uh, to deliver on, and they did not achieve 44% in 2019, 2020, was 60% uh, achieved and, and not achieved 40%. Next slide. The financial uh, uh, um, performance, Madam Chair, you can see it's uh, over three years, the income and expenditure trends are articulated uh, in, the, in the slide. I'm not going to read word for word, but just to indicate their sources of income, they do get an income from government grant then there are other sources of income as well that, that they receive. Um, and then the expenditure is also indicated there, but just to indicate in the last financial year, the income was 33 million, and of which 28 million made up, made, comes from the grant of government, and they get 4.8 million from other sources. The expenditure, uh, the income was 33 million, the expenditure was 31 million, they have a surplus of 4.819. So the net asset value you can see, Madam Chair, was a deficit and of 2.6 in 2017, 2018, and then a healthy net value, um, net asset value of 269, and in 2019, 2020, it's 2.211. Um, the anal analysis of cash and cash equivalents, Madam Chair. Um, we've got here um, the totals over three years. I'm focusing, if you look at the last financial year, it's 4.3. Uh, if you have to add trade and other receivables, it's 1.126. Uh, their current liabilities was 4819. Their current commitments, uh, 1.559. And you, they have a net, uh, um, not a surplus, the, uh, a deficit of 8.67. Okay, the audit outcomes over the last three years, Madam Chair, is in 2017-18, it was unqualified. In 2018-19, it was also unqualified. In 2019-20, was unqualified with some findings. The composition of the board, uh, Madam Chair, the board is composed of non-executive directors appointed by the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, according to the SAIDS Act of 1997, as amended. Uh, the term of the board, the board was appointed in 2017, and the term ends in 2022. Uh, here, Madam Chair, is the list of the board members. I will not read them name by name, but just to indicate that you will notice that there is a wide spread of expertise in terms of legal, governance, medical, they come, there's uh, from the sports background, uh, public health, pharmacology, um, there's also an athlete, a retired athlete. Um, so that is um, uh, the, the spread of, of, of expertise we have. So they could go back, uh, Lulama. And then in terms of the gender, Madam Chair, you can see there's a good spread of a male and female. Uh, I think there's three, uh, three females in this board of, uh, uh, within the board. And there's also a um, demographics in terms of race that's articulated here as well. In terms of um, Indian colored, uh, white, uh, black African. Okay, next slide. Um, the oversight activities, the number of board members, there are 10 board members. They've had, in the last year, they've had four meetings. Um, and you can see it's been consistent uh, throughout, um, 
um, the last three, those last three years under review. Uh, the number of board committee meetings, we have not had access to that information. The attendance rate of board meetings in the last two years, uh, in 2018-19, 90% of board members attended meetings. And in 2019-2020, it was 80%. Um, audit committee members, there were four meetings consistently over the last three years, one per quarter. The composition of the management, uh, Madam Chair, you can see that the CEO, Mr. Khalant, um, his uh, details are there. Um, you will note that all of the uh, managers are um, uh, employed on a permanent basis. And then you have Mr. Onke Nguani, who is the CFO, uh, Ms. Wafika Beg Jassim, the legal manager, uh, Dr. Amanda Klaassen Smithers is the education manager, and Mr. Fakhmi Khalad is the general manager. Uh, so the composition of staff, they have a total staff complement of 17, of which 10 are female, uh, 7 are me male, 6 are um, uh, black African, 8 colored, um, 1 Indian, and two black. Next slide. Okay. Some of the challenges, Madam Chair, um, that we've identified with SAIDS and the interventions in place is uh, where there has been challenges with the appeals board. Um, it's been quite ineffective, and I think we've had various communications with uh, SAIDS around that. They had a chairperson who was almost um, AWOL, uh, and as a result, it led them to... Uh, uh, many of the cases that were before the appeals board not being heard on time, which could result then in risk of court cases and athletes and uh, 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 taking states to court because of the fact that the timelines are not being met uh, and it hinders progress uh, in terms of finalizing cases. Uh, the matter has been resolved as the minister has now replaced the appeals board chairperson and one member of the appeals board. Uh, the other challenge is the, is the, is the legislation, the outdated Drug Free Sport Act, uh, 14 of 1997, and as amended in 2005, a working group uh, is to be established to address the outdated legislation and legislation that no longer meets the needs of the current national sports regulations. So as we amend the National Sport and Recreation Act, Madam Chair, we will also be looking at how we can strengthen the legislation around the Drug-Free Sport Act. And then lack of cooperation by the Department of Basic Education, particularly in terms of access to schools in order for SAIDS to conduct anti-doping education, as well as the acting, uh, actual testing. Uh, the department is addressing the matter as part of the overall engagements with the Department of Basic Education. Madam Chair, this is quite a challenge because you would find that, you know, within the school environment, uh, parents are responsible for their children. They may not give us access to their children in schools or to the learners in schools. Um, uh, rightly so, because parents uh, obviously don't want, um, you know, access to their children by people they may not trust or may not know. But at the same time, Madam Chair, there is an, a deliberate attempt by parents for not giving access to sales uh, to the learners because of the fact that children are already being given uh, performance enhancing substance, which will show up if SAIDS has to do the normal routine testing of young children who are participating in school sport activities. Um, this is quite rampant, especially where the schools, there is a, a very good culture of school sports activities. You would find that there are young learners who are um, uh, uh, taking performance enhancing substances. With that, uh, Madam Chair, I complete the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DTG. Uh, I've forgotten to say something. Um, uh, Honorable uh, the Excellence uh, Judge and Party, that I was supposed to apologize up, um, on what happened because uh, in our program, 
the question of today that you were having, the president answering the question, or when we planned, it was not there. And we had to uh, shift your times. Uh, let's, let's appreciate that uh, you, you did uh, come whilst it's, it's very late and uh, disrupted your programs. I've forgotten to, to make that apology. And then to you now, Honorable the Excellent Judge in Party. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. And understood, the, ch the changes are understood. Um, as I've mentioned, the management will be presenting their new performance plan, uh, whatever it is left of it, because I thought the lady that had just spoken was actually giving a performance plan. <laughs> Um, Madam Chair, the, the effect, just a few words before I hand over to management. The effect of the lockdown restrictions on sport has affected and continues to affect SAIDS with regard to meeting its performance targets. As a regulatory agency, however, SAIDS is still required to deliver its services to sport especially as athletes prepare to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. The annual performance plan is the practical implementation of the SAID's strategic plan through the setting of targets that can reasonably be achieved in 2021. The board has reviewed the annual performance plan and approved the indicators as a reflection from the strategic plan. And we believe that SAIDS has sufficient resources to implement the annual performance plan in a post-COVID sports environment. With those few words, Chair, I hand over to management. Khalid. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen here. Um, you can see that. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Judge, for the introduction, and uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair, for uh, again extending the invitation to say it. Um, our presentation will, uh, as, as fairly brief, it will focus uh, uh, on the annual performance plan as requested, um, and uh, I will I will touch on the. Um, key parts uh, of the uh, performance plan, specifically the delivery environment um, and the uh, key areas uh, of the annual performance plan. Uh, to draw your attention, just the context of uh, the, this performance plan, uh, you can see there the, the cover and the graphic, it's stay the course, uh, and that um, um, kind of words or, 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 or slogan was intentional. Uh, we've had uh, lots of disruptions, um, things that we uh, could not have anticipated. Uh, so this performance plan um, is uh, was drafted uh, with the intent of staying true to our mandate and to our goals and to uh, what uh, the board has set uh, out for us um, in the strategic plan. So currently this uh, sports com competitions has resumed with some restrictions. And uh, as an independent regulatory authority, we have no control or sway where the sport will resume. It's up to the national federations. And where sports competitions resume, we then deliver the service uh, of testing and anti-doping education. We are focused uh, primarily on uh, out-of-competition testing uh, so that we can um, ramp up the uh, testing in the lead up to world championship uh, events and uh, the Olympics. Uh, after the lockdown restrictions were eased, SAIDS uh, resumed our testing and education program with full, with full compliance to COVID protocols. Uh, we had to invest uh, in uh, PP, uh, personal protective uh, equipment. Uh, if the committee of honorable members are familiar uh, with uh, a testing procedure, 
It's a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction between a sample collection officer and an athlete. Uh, so there's uh, different protective procedures or protocols that we have to adhere to within the current uh, environment. So we, we had to invest and purchase equipment uh, to continue testing in a responsible uh, manner. Um, when we considered our targets uh, in the annual performance plan, we only focused on variables that we were able to influence and control. Uh, and what that uh, means is if you look at our um, 2021 uh, APP versus our 2020, you will not see uh, that big a difference. There's actually no difference in the indicators, mainly in the um, quantity, in the quantum of the indicators. The, uh, because the indicators and the targets assume that lockdown restrictions will eventually ease off and that sport will fully resume in 2021. So we are optimistic uh, in that sense and we continue working uh, with, uh, under uh, that assumption uh, since we can't control the other variables, whether we go into a, a third wave or whether lockdown restrictions are uh, further uh, um, made uh, stricter. Other than the COVID restrictions, our 2021 delivery environment is also influenced by changes in our compliance environment. And we are now subject to a revised World Anti-Doping Code, which is referred to as the 2021 uh, World Anti-Doping Code and the UNESCO Convention. And South Africa signs the UNESCO Convention, uh, the South African government signs the UNESCO Convention and that convention uh, was renewed in 2019. Uh, and both these global uh, uh, policies come with more compliance requirement with respect to governance of the agency, uh, testing that we do in sport, anti-doping education services that we deliver to athletes, coaches, and other um, sports people, and also on the adjudication of cases uh, that we have to prosecute for doping offenses. To date, we are fully compliant with the UNESCO Convention Against Doping in Sport, uh, and this compliance procedure was completed in February 2021. SAIDS is the implementing agency for the South African government uh, on the UNESCO Convention, uh, and we ensure that South Africa remains uh, compliant and a, a active party to the convention. Uh, SAGE was audited in 2018 by the World Anti-Doping Agency with respect to our compliance with the code. And following that uh, audit, we were declared fully compliant with the World Anti-Doping Code. Uh, we hope to maintain our compliance status. And we have uh, in this um, performance year, the 2021-2022 um, year, we have allocated additional human resources and budget uh, to ensure we uh, meet and exceed uh, those compliance requirements. Um, oops, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong, so I'm looking at this line on my computer. Um, if there are, um, uh, Anki, if you want to just touch on that last bullet point of the uh, finances with respect to um, earmarked as per the e and &E, if you just want to give a brief comment on that. Um, thank you, uh, Hadid, and thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, the funding, um, we, we are required to submit every year, twice a year in July and November, what our estimated expenditure would be and how we break that down given the grant that will be afforded to us by National Treasury uh, through the department. And we have done that and we have submitted it within deadline. Um, we received communication from the department that our ground won't change um, as per the e, e which aligns with our scenario that we're using to plan for our performance. So our funding is easier earmarked to achieve those objectives within um, our APP. Thanks, Anke. Okay. And then, um... Um, with the EPP, these are the core programs, um, the, the basic uh, kind of bricks or house that SAGE is built around and that we uh, build our programs and deliver our services. Um, and it's five programs and those are outlined on the screen. And in the APP, um, the indicators detail how we deliver on, uh, within those uh, different programs. 
Uh, with respect to service delivery, um, uh, as mentioned, uh, we're um, going on the assumption that sport uh, will e eventually fully resume. So there's no reduction in testing plan for the performance period. Uh, obviously, in our quarterly reports, where we don't meet the quarterly targets, uh, we do a, a narrative um, to explain the context of why uh, the targets uh, are not met or where they are exceeded. Um, with respect to um, anti-doping education uh, services, um, are predominantly delivered through virtual platforms. And I have to um, acknowledge uh, the national federations uh, in South Africa, um, particularly swimming, athletics, rugby, um, netball, which other ones are there? There's been quite a few hockey also. Okay. That they have been really receptive uh, within the lockdown period um, to these virtual platforms. And our anti doping education team, um, in the fourth quarter of our financial year, even though it was locked down, they were still able to meet uh, the uh, targets that were set up, uh, before uh, lockdown. Uh, and that is largely because the national federations have really embraced um, the virtual platforms for delivery of these services. Um, with respect uh, to results management, we obviously had to adapt. Generally, uh, we have face-to-face -face hearings. Um, uh, the way we adapted is to leverage um, a virtual platform such as Zoom. Uh, however, uh, we developed a specific protocol uh, going forward where the athletes have the option. They are asked where they would like a virtual hearing to ensure that uh, we, it's not forced on the athlete and that the athlete's procedural rights uh, are not uh, compromised. Uh, uh, again, with respect to education, we've also developed our own e-learning platform um, for our internal training with our sample collection um, personnel and with the tribunal panel members. So previously, um, say spent a considerable amount of resources in our education budget on our symposium and workshops. Uh, and uh, we're hoping um, some, uh, we, we use some of that money that we spent uh, to develop our own uh, e-learning platforms. Uh, further, we collaborate with WIDA on a global e-learning platform um, where South, South African athletes and coaches uh, can also uh, do training courses uh, with respect to more global uh, um, matters that they have to uh, be aware of or information uh, uh, particular to their sport code. Um, with respect to national and international uh, collaboration, um, in 2019, um, the Portfolio Committee um, members participated in one of our African Union events that the then uh, Minister of Sport hosted uh, in South Africa. It was the African Union Anti-Doping uh, Forum. Um, those events um, obviously uh, did not happen in the last year and we don't foresee it um, occurring um, within uh, this um, financial year or this performance uh, year that we are talking about. Uh, so in our, in our performance plan, we have not um, made any um, allocations or indicators for uh, national or international travel. Uh, however, we continue to use virtual platforms uh, to interact and collaborate uh, with our international and continental counterparts. And uh, we have continued um, with our collaborated collaboration project uh, with Egypt and Ethiopia uh, through Zoom project meetings and uh, the mentoring continues and uh, we have specific milestones uh, in these international projects that have to be met over um, the next uh, year. Uh, with any performance plan, it's uh, important that we look at the, or acknowledge the emerging risks or risks that could influence uh, how we deliver uh, on our services. Uh, the effect of lockdown on sport, um, uh, what we have not yet able uh, to determine and what we will probably be able to report to the Portfolio Committee in 2020, 2022, whether the lockdown has provided an opportunity for those who want to cheat uh, and dope in sport, 
um, and whether they have gained any uh, benefit uh, from them, uh, from the um, lockdown on sport. Uh, our testing program going forward is very aggressive and robust, uh, and we will be looking for trends uh, to see if uh, lockdown provided the opportunity for cheats. Uh, uncertainty around funding, um, but that funding has been now, um, that uncertainty has been uh, quelled. Um, as Anki mentioned, uh, that the, the information and directive that we've received uh, from uh, the department with, with respect uh, to the e, e funding and uh, the funding over the next year uh, is certain. Uh, so we are, are not planning and working uh, with any uh, cuts to the existing uh, allocation. Uh, slowdown and decrease in revenue generated through testing requests. Um, this is a, um, a major uh, reduction in revenue for SAIDs. Uh, if you look at our previous uh, uh, financial um, accounts, you will see we generate uh, in excess of 2 million a year, between 2 to 4 million a year with uh, through international testing um, uh, generating this revenue. And this revenue is through um, international competitions in South Africa, international athletes training in South Africa. And also when our African counterparts or international federations ask us to test in different countries and do training. Uh, with travel restrictions and with the slowdown in sport, uh, we obviously witnessing a significant uh, decrease in revenue um, uh, from that um, revenue stream. And we will have to adjust our expenditure to take that into account. Uh, other emerging risks is exposure uh, for athletes and sample, sample collection uh, during doping control procedures um, to COVID, um, to the COVID virus. Uh, Although we have strict PPE requirements, we've, which we have integrated into our procedures and standards for testing, those risks are always there. Uh, in addition, we have now, uh, to further reduce our risk, we have piloted um, a paperless system in uh, 2021. We are 2021 this year. Um, this year, it started in February. Um, where we will further be able to reduce hand-to-hand um, uh, -hand or uh, contact between the athlete and the sample collection uh, off um, officer during the testing uh, procedure. And again, it's just to further reduce uh, our risk of spreading uh, the virus. Chair, I thank you for inviting us and for giving us uh, this opportunity to uh, share with, uh, with the uh, Portfolio Committee our annual performance plan. Uh, that was a general overview. You have received the detailed uh, uh, APP that was tabled uh, together with DSAC's um, uh, annual performance plan and annual report as an entity our annual performance plan is integrated into uh, the department. Uh, Chair, we welcome questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I'm suspecting now, uh, Your Excellency Judge, uh, we are giving to me now to chair this part. We have done with- Yes, uh, yes, definitely okay. Chair. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, honorable members. That's, that's why we decided uh, that we must take uh, your good self when we read your, your presentation to us then forwarding. Uh, we've seen that uh, we cannot not to call you to come, but uh, we're not expecting to call you at this time uh, of, of, of the evening. Uh, honorable members, I'm seeing the Honorable Thank Zondi. Uh, Dennis uh, Joseph, Chairperson. Thank you. <laughs> honorable Zondi, Honorable Dennis, uh, Honorable Malibosi, Honorable Malomane, in that order. 
Yes, honorable members. Thank you, honorable chair. Uh, a few questions, honorable chair. Uh, good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, evening. To honorable mm -hmm. members. <laughs> and the and the and the and the and the board and 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 and, and the management. Chair, so welcome the report. Uh, firstly, that is uh, encouraging. Uh, the first question, Chair, is with regard to the income. The department indicated that. Uh, uh, there is grant funding and in, in, in other income. Uh, I just wish to know where else are you generating your revenue and how, except, uh, except the, the grant funding. The second one, Chair, is with regard to current assets. Uh, I see the drop in the in fact, in fact, the fluctuation of the, the current assets um, in the last three years, the four million, seven million, and uh, and the previous one is is six. What is the reason for that fluctuation instead of growing, or, or what are the reasons um, uh, for the current assets uh, that fluctuation? The next one is shared with, is with regard to the audit outcome, unqualified with findings. I just wish to know uh, which are those findings, which are those findings, uh, and what are they doing to 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 to, to deal with those funding raised by the the auditor general. And maybe uh, the, uh, 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 another question uh, still on the on the audit. Uh, the unqualified for the three previous uh, financial year is the is their target um, because the other three did not have any findings and uh, slightly this the current the the. The previous year uh, has findings um, instead of clean audit. Uh, please uh, clarify that. Um, Chair, with regard to the board, the 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 the, the, the board itself, um, I won't say much. Uh, though there are three females and 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 seven males, uh, but it is. Uh, maybe <clears throat> the DG uh, explained yesterday how they how they arrive at 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 at, uh, uh, at this um, uh, on another board. Maybe it's the same uh, with regard to the capacity and the. Um, not 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 with the capacity with the with the applicants uh, rather rather than capacity the applicants that uh, there were few females I just wish to know if it is the case on this board the last one share uh, is with regard to the indicators the indicators in the APP are drawn from your strategic plan. Um, 2020 to 25. I just wish to know: Are you happy with the the your performance so far? Are you on track? Uh, given that uh, you 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 are in the second year of your five year strategic plan. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Sondi. Honorable. Um... Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson, and I would just like to uh, uh, thank, express my thanks to the presentations and uh, the Honourable Judge Party and as well as the CEO and the CFO. Uh, Chairperson, nowadays in government, the CFO and the CEO are very key people uh, to make good governance work. Um, I would like to acknowledge the turnaround 
in the financial part um, with um, even I had my, my colleague now question um, certain financial experiences under unqualified audits, but there is signs of improvement with surpluses that have shown a positive picture in the financial position. Um, so that is good. Um, so my question is, the first one is uh, with the Olympics, I, I heard the Olympics coming up, do the doping increase with uh, international events? And then also, um, I heard that there will be no international um, uh, uh, visits, but uh, my question will still be, will the team go to Tokyo or is there enough people on the northern side of the ad atmosphere to, to, to do that work? Um, Chairperson, I'm not too sure who's going to who will answer, respond to the questions, but I've, 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 I've listed some under under the board and some under the department's APPs. Um, with the emerging risk, well, slide number six, um, there was a question, a point about uncertainty around the funding. My question is, um, if we exclude the work of the international uh, income, will there, be still, will there be a bigger risk uh, in the uncertainty around the funding or will it reduce the risk uh, um, around, around the funding? Um, the question on page four with the APP um, strategic overview 1.1 under the performance development environment. I noted that the honorable chair, uh, honorable judge, um, um, as a, as a, as a, in his foreword refers to a strategic plan uh, from the year 2021 to 2026, which seems to be more correct. And I noted that in the department's overview, um, strategic plan, it refers to 2020 to 2025. So there's a difference there in, in, the, in the time of the years. On page four, still paragraph two, I would like to ask um, if SAID's grant has not been increased for the past two years. And I noted in the paragraph, how do they manage and what adjustments are they making to cope with the grants, not receiving uh, grants. And page four, a chairperson under 1.1 performance and delivery environment under organization environment, paragraph three. There is a point about appointment or management, uh, appointment of management and staff. So my question here is just with reference to, to advertisements or advertising, what, what methods are they following or processes? Do they use newspapers or electronic um, advertisement and where can people see if there are opportunities in the department? Uh, and I also like to know um, what is the turnover in the department? Is it a very stable um, staff rate or is there a turnover that is uh, creating a lot of um, advertisement and appointments? On page five, revisions of the legislative mandates. Um, what are some of the most important consequences for non-compliant according to the new uh, UNESCO convention? against uh, doping in sport, as was raised by, um, by Khalid. And then on page six, um, under the administration, or, or rather, do you make allowance for staff increases despite the um, difficult financial situations? And if so, what is the percentage of, of allowances that you've, that, that, or that you, percentage that you allow for increases of, for staff um, salaries in the administration? Uh, on page six, also the second paragraph, there I want to ask the question, what, what was the issue with the Bloemfontein um, uh, the laboratory. laboratory relating to the full accreditation and, and the full operations? I saw in the report there something about Bloemfontein, but I couldn't fully understand there what was going on. On page eight, chairperson program one, uh, 4.1.2 performance. Um. Status, I would like to know uh, that uh, they I find that new indicator strains the submit annual budget to the board for review and approval. Now, since 2017 18, financially it's there, but for me, it is a normal common sense thing that you have to submit an annual uh, report or budget to the board. So I'm not sure why is it a new indicator, why was it initially a new indicator? Um, 
And then on page 13, 4.2.3, program two, um, the issue about tips of and intelligence information. I see there's an X, which means there seems to be no targets, but I just want to know how relevant is tips of in your environment, in your working environment, how important is that? Page 14, 4.3.2, program three, also new indicators since 2017 till 2023-24. 20, that refers to the tribunals and I'm glad the, the, the DG, or DDG have raised, this kind of raised that, that issue. My question is, um, uh, on that slide, what is the, the cause of the delay? Uh, or because it's been coming on almost for seven years now. It's going to go to seven years if it goes to 23, 24. And where in the process is the, the promulgated legislation? Um, and what can the committee do? Uh, you know, to, to Honorable Dennis, try to, to, to summarize. We are on yeah, yeah, number 14 now. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, I've got one, two more uh, chairperson. Okay. Um, um, the question just about the anti-doping education on page 16, 4.4.1, program four, strategic ob objective. The question is on a, under education and awareness. What, what, what are your target markets? Um, and which sports codes are the biggest culprits in the anti-doping? I, I note you refer to, um, to um, at athletics, but maybe there's other sports. And then a question on impact on COVID on your own organization, your entity. would like to know what has happened in the last year. How were you affected? And then in closing, Chairperson, um, the question, last question on, I think it's to Anka is his name, general, good governance, financial, under good governance, the question on financial management. Um, are you, are there any outstanding matters or disputes with the AG? And um, my previous member have asked a few questions there. So I would like just to know what lessons have you learned uh, in the last um, annual, annual report that you can take forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity, uh, Chairperson. Honorable members, we are no longer implementing the three-minute rule, but you, you must try to be reasonable. Uh, uh, I've seen it in the first uh, honorable member ask about it was nine questions, uh, Honorable uh, Dennis, it's 17 questions. So we, we must be fair uh, uh, to other members because I know you're still going to want to do follow-ups. We usually said uh, we are giving eight, three minutes, but because uh, we need to scrutinize the presentation, but don't exaggerate honorable members, but it's good. Uh, it shows that uh, honorable members, uh, they do have passionate about whatever is coming to, to their uh, offices and to the committee. Honorable uh, Martin Gose. Thank you, Chair. Um, maybe I should just show face a little bit uh, before I turn it off again. Uh, okay. uh, good uh, evening to everyone important. Uh, can I close this one now? Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. You, you. you do keep the rule. Others, they <laughs> don't. Thank you, Honorable <laughs> Martingus. Sure. Um, as uh, SAIDS is uh, pushing drug-free sport, um, what is SAIDS position? in Casta Semenya's accusations of uh, International Association of Athletics Federation uh, of using her body as a human guinea pig by forcing her to take medication to control her testosterone levels in her body. Uh, still, on Casta Semenya's lost in the appeal against the world athletics, what is SAID's action plans, if any, pertaining that decision? The third uh, question I have is, uh, are there any new racial accusations in sample collection during doping control processes reported? If not, uh, what measures do you have in place to hinder such occurrences? If positive, what have you done in making sure that such actions don't repeat themselves? Uh, do you have the, these doping control processes in places where the poor of the poorest live? If not, 
Why not? Uh, we'll stop there, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Malinkosi. Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Chair. Let me greet evening to everyone present. Uh, Chair, my question, it was also about the issue of the support that is Casta Simina getting from SAIDS, but because uh, Honorable Madlingos has also asked, I think maybe it will be better to leave it like that so that we can hear what is their side on the issue of Casta. The other issue is that I just want to know the impact because they're saying if the laboratory is going to be closed, it's not fully functioning. They have to take their test internationally and then this, it will be, it will be costing us. Is there any other ways here in South Africa that they can do the test without taking them to internationally? The other thing I just want to speak on the issue of gender. Yes, yeah, it's, it's seven versus three. We, I think the department next time need to make sure that they even appoint more women than, than males. So I just want to also ask that, what is the impact of COVID-19 towards the testing process of sports doping? Are athlete, athletes still being tested? How has the testing been given during this COVID-19 situations regarding the, the safety of protocols? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Maluman. I don't see any other hand. Um, let me take this opportunity also to thank SIS uh, to come and presenting uh, what they've just presented. They all, uh, I don't have so much questions because I don't want to repeat what other members asked. Uh, I wanted uh, to to talk to our department. Uh, I'm suspecting uh, it's going to be, uh, I don't know how many years, seven, seven uh, years now that we've been having this problem with basic education. So really these MOUs uh, since inception that you, uh, you've signed with a basic education, it's haunting us as this committee. In whatever presentation that we are having, uh, we just experience these challenges of basic education. Uh, this is not the, fir the first time uh, hearing this problem of the legislation. And, and maybe we're emphasizing that each department is, uh, we have reported uh, in, in past meetings that you are going to meet, we are meeting with the basic education. It must be fast track because it's where it, it's happening, this thing of doping of, of of kids at school. And now these parents uh, won't allow that there must be a random uh, testing in schools. It doesn't assist. So uh, it's one of the things that when we meet again, uh, they must pass track this thing of this legislation. Uh, how, how has it been functioning the, the the laboratory during this lockdown. Uh, we were about uh, to go there, but uh, due to time frames, we detained as the last parliament. But honorable members, as this new parliament, uh, the last uh, committee did vis uh, visit uh, the office of SAIDS. Uh, I'm suspecting, uh, hoping that come next year, maybe the COVID-19 will be not like this, uh, let alone that we are still uh, expecting uh, the third wave, which we don't want that third wave to come. Uh, I will, uh, in behalf of committee, I will 
uh, ask that as a committee we must put to our program to visit the, their offices. Uh, they are used to be based here in Cape Town. I don't know whether you're still here. Uh, okay, thank you so much for the presentation. I cannot repeat other things that I wanted to ask Ms. Uh, Mr. Zondi and Denise. Uh, they've chow a lot for the committee, not for themselves. Thank you so much. Can we have responses? Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the honorable members for the questions and for the active engagement. Uh, Chair, I'm, uh, we're going to cluster the questions so that it's an efficient way of answering. And if we do miss uh, any information, please remind us at the end. I'm going to ask uh, the CFO, Anke, to address the questions with related to finances and the Auditor General and um, those matters. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak once again. Um, to, I was first respond to Honorable Zondi's questions. Um, um, his first question is what, what are the sources of income we have? Uh, is, it, that, uh, is it on? Who's that? Yes, oh. yes. yes. Okay. Hello, Chair. Um, okay. <clears throat> no, no. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the honorable honorable Zondi's first question was, what other source of income do we have other than the grant funding we see from the department? And um, our answer to that is, it, we, we, we have ad hoc funding, which is a funding we apply for um, in, in, form, in the form of a grant from the National Lottery. And we also generate income through our doping control sales. That's when we test on behalf of entities and especially international um, federations, we, they pay us for the service to test on their behalf. His second question was, what, were, what was the cause of the fluctuation in the current assets? Uh, a majority of the balance that sits in current assets is our cash resources. Um, about, two, about four years ago, we were in a deficit situation and the entity put in um, budgetary controls and austerity measures in order to control our costs. And that led, led to cost savings and a wiser way or a more intelligent way of, of, of preserving our cash resources, which is why there's an increase, there's a huge increase from 2018 to 2019. And you will see between 2019 and 2020, it's pretty much similar because we have capital measures in place. In terms of the audit out outcomes, he asked what, what, were, what were the findings, especially in the 2019-20 year. So I don't remember I asked. Um, um, the, great, the findings were mainly around supply chain, supply chain management and mainly around how tender processes. Um, the tender process was followed correctly. It's, it, the matter was that AG was not entirely satisfied with the way the different committees in the tender processes were, were constructed. They said uh, they weren't constructed uh, in compliance with our supply chain uh, management policy. What the entity has done to address those findings is first, we investigated the irregular expenditure around that and where the shortfall is. And we've taken that to the, our audit committee and to our board. And the recommendation there was that we enlist the services of our internal audit to audit our SEM policy and to audit our SEM processes and see where we short for, and then we can fix those areas. And that is what we are currently busy with. We have um, taken the regular expenditure arising from those tenders to the ARC and to the board, so they are aware of it, and where they needed to either recommend condonation through, tre through treasury or to write off, um, we requested that permission from them. Um, an unqualified audit opinion means that um, there are no issues. What we have presented in your financial statement is um, a reflection of what has happened in the entity during the year. 
And uh, a clean audit will always be our goal because the intention is for us to do things the right way and doing things the right way will result in a clean audit. I will now move on to Honorable Joseph's questions. Um, his first questions were uncertainty around funding and what, the, if, what um, not having business with international federations due to COVID, how it has affected the entity. Well, our biggest source of income is the grant and the, the, the income from the Bingo also is also a huge factor to us, but if, if we don't test for the entities, then we don't have the cost to, to test for the entity. So if we don't generate the income, then we don't incur the cost. But what we have done is, we, again, we put budget, budgetary controls in place and austerity measures. Uh, our austerity measures were to cut down on testing, but, not, but, but we don't compromise our mandate. We meet the requirements of our mandate on how many tests we're required to perform. We've achieved uh, efficiencies in the querying of our samples to our lab in that we courier samples in batches. Thus we save on the cost of, 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 of courier. Um, we, we, we haven't had um, salary increases, but we do have what is called a cost of living adjustment. What that does is it will put our employees in the same position as they were in the, in, in the previous year in that they can afford the same slice of bread today that they did yesterday. We have decreased uh, our overseas travel. Uh, what has saved us a lot in terms of our funding is the National Rotaries uh, grant that we applied for. Uh, that is the main funding for our education um, um, department. Their projects and their workshops and, and their initiatives are mainly funded through Lotto. Unfortunately, the grant that we see from Treasury is not sufficient. So you know, the, 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 the yeah. lottery grant True. has helped us quite a lot. Um, in terms of, of, of the budget submission being a new indicator on the APP, um, that process of submitting the budget to the board is something that is done on a yearly basis. And we, we have done that as part of our processes. It's just that it was introduced to our PP, into, into our APP as a measurable target in the year 2018. It's, it's a process that's always been done, but it's, it's only started being measured in 2018. And to answer uh, the honorable's last question, there are no outstanding issues with the AGSA. Um, as we stand here now, we're just waiting for them to um, start the current year's audit. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Onke. Uh, Chair, I will ask the general manager to address the questions with respect to testing and intelligence tip-ups. Thank you, Madam Chair, for providing me the opportunity to respond. Uh, with regard to the honorable members, the first question with regard to tip-off and intelligence, um, this plays an extremely important part in our testing program because what it does, it narrows where we can test and who we can test even further. We have a specialist investigations department. So whenever we get, and we have, we also have a, a, a database where we input all the information into so that once we get all the information and there's any links between the various type of information that we get, we can target specific athletes and specific persons to test. And this, we've been very successful in this through our type of information and uh, the, the investigations information that we've received. So once we get it, we do an analysis, we see what the value is of that particular tip of, is it valid or is it not valid? Is it just someone uh, sending information because he or she is jealous because someone may be beating him or her or him, his or her son? So we look at that information, evaluate it, and at the end of it, we, we come out with a conclusion and determine whether to proceed with testing or not. And in terms of that, we've been, we've been very successful in targeting specific who we want to test and where we want to test because of the investigations and the type of information that we received. In terms of the second question that we received from the honorable member is with regard to the impact of testing during COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 has definitely impacted testing to give you an we went, we suspended testing around about the 8th of, 15th of March, 2020. 
and we resumed testing through the whole lockdown. We did not conduct any testing. We resumed testing on the about the 15th or the 16th of December when the restrictions were lifted. And then again, um, once uh, the second wave came into effect, uh, we had to uh, suspend testing again and we started testing after the, the upliftment of that particular lockdown on the 8th of February. So to give you an idea of, uh, of, of, of the impact that it's had, uh, in a normal year, we would normally conduct 1,600 tests. Um, during 2019-2020 financial year, we conducted 208 tests. So about one-eighth of the tests that we would normally conduct. However, since the 8th of March, since the, the, the 8th of February, once things started lifting, we continued testing as per normal. So as I can um, happily report that as from the 1st of April in our new financial year up to this particular point, which is about five, six weeks later, we have conducted about 170 doping controls, which is on par with what we've conducted in the whole year of 2019-2020. So we definitely, on, if things go according to plan and um, COVID is, it remains on, the, in, on a low level during 2020-2021, we will definitely reach our target for 2021-2022. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Fahmi, um, and I'll address the remaining questions. Um, there was a question on the method of advertising for job vacancies and whether uh, what's the rate of turnover. The full-time staff complement at SAGE is 17. We have a very, very low turnover. Um, this week, we're celebrating three employees' 10-year uh, anniversary. Um, uh, so SAGE has been... Um, uh, uh, a, a preferred place to be employed. We invest a lot in employer training and employer uh, welfare. Uh, in terms of, uh, so we have not had a lot of um, vacancies for jobs. We have had positions um, that we've um, leveraged our relationship with the CETAs uh, and we've used the interns uh, a lot. One of our full-time employees currently um, used to be an intern with SRSA four years ago. Uh, so we have used the, uh, the intern programs uh, from the different universities and CETAs um, to full, uh, address some of our capacity issues, uh, but we have not had uh, a lot of vacancies, uh, full-time vacancies. Where we do have vacancies, we advertise in both electronic media, uh, paper, uh, and on, on various uh, uh, job websites and job posting also on the, on the SAGE uh, website. Uh, the question on uh, consequences for non-compliance to the UNESCO Convention, um, those compliances are uh, fairly drastic to the country as a whole rather to than just the ag an agency like SAGE. And I will cite the example uh, of uh, countries like Russia, Romania, Brazil, um, that have been uh, sanctioned and prevented uh, from either uh, bidding to host international sports events uh, in their country and also with, in the case of Russia, where they've been banned from the Olympics and various other world championships. And those, um, all those uh, consequences were a direct result for uh, non-compliance with the UNESCO Convention Against Doping in Sport. Um, with respect to Honorable Member Dennis Joseph's uh, question on the Bloemfontein Laboratory, uh, my apologies on that. The, uh, those uh, information was historical. Uh, and as you may have picked up that the chair was quite familiar and uh, other members of the committee are quite familiar um, with issues around Bloemfontein Laboratory. Bloemfontein Laboratory is an independent entity from SAIDS. Uh, they are service provider um, in terms of analysis. Uh, they are an uh, institute or a uh, entity that uh, resides in part of the University of Free State. Um, uh, and yes, they lost the uh, global accreditation uh, in 2016 or 2017, if I recall. They have regained that um, and they are on, the, on track to uh, retain it. And they have just received an, an injection um, in March from the department, uh, from DSAC, um, of uh, 2 million to support the operations as they were severely affected uh, by the lockdown 
um, in sport. Uh, again, it's an independent entity, and I would uh, uh, rather request the uh, honourable member to um, direct the questions to uh, the Bloemfontein Laboratory Management when they do present uh, or when they, when they do meet with the committee as they have uh, historically met uh, with the committee. Um, the target market uh, for anti-doping education uh, is always first being athletes, uh, the coaches, the entourage or personnel that works with athletes like physios, sports med medical doctors, um, but a large part of the uh, uh, anti-doping education in the last couple of years of, uh, at the school level specifically has been uh, parents, uh, school governing bodies, and uh, learners uh, at the school. Learners specifically that are involved in sport and the sport uh, particularly that we focused our energy on is rugby and track and field uh, on the school level. Um, with respect to the, the um, honorable, uh, there were two members uh, that asked questions uh, re, um, with respect to uh, Castor Semenya's case. Um, the Castor Semenya case has nothing to do with say It is not an anti-doping or a doping issue. Uh, it is a matter between uh, World Athletics, uh, the athlete and uh, Athletic South Africa as the member federation of uh, World Athletics. Uh, so say, say there's no position uh, official position on the case as it is, doesn't form part of our business, uh, core business or uh, policy directives. Um, we obviously have personal positions on that, uh, but uh, um, not a formal policy position uh, from SAIDS. Uh, with respect to the question of has there ever been racial accusations of sample collection uh, or against sample collection officers? Uh, in my history, uh, and together with Fahmi, um, the general manager who has been uh, doing this work for the past 21 years, uh, we, we have not to have a documented uh, accusation or incident or racial uh, incident. Um, uh, so uh, we can't uh, um, uh, really attest or report on that. Uh, matter. However, uh, to give some assurance to that to that process, the doping control process uh, complies with an international standard. It's never one person. There's uh, at least two or three uh, people. The process requires witnessing and also a different person to record and and fill in the information. So there are as not just one person. So if there is a situation, uh, there won't just be a he says she says type of uh, scenario. With respect to doping control processes um, or doping control testing happening outside of uh, urban areas uh, in rural or uh, lesser resourced areas, uh, as mentioned in the annual performance um, plan in terms of uh, variables or matters that we have control over and those that we don't, uh, that we do not have control over. SAIS is a regulatory authority, we regulate um, dope, uh, doping and cheating in sport. So we test where sport happens. So if uh, football plays in the urban areas or cricket is only in the urban areas, that's where our services uh, need to deliver. However, anti-doping education services uh, are delivered uh, across the country and our education manager in her um, uh, reports uh, 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 do, uh, does do a geographic uh, outline of uh, where education, anti-doping education services are delivered around the country in both urban, rural, and the different provinces. And uh, we, we are, one of our goals, objectives, and values of SAIDS is to deliver our anti-doping education services across the country in every uh, province. Um, I've mentioned, I, we've talked about the lab, and then there was one question, the impact on, of COVID on SAIDS, and uh, I assume that, <coughs> excuse me, the question was, other than what the technical um, procedures or policies that we've implemented, yes, SAIDS has been touched by the virus. Um, we, the virus has touched our board, it has touched our staff, um, it has touched our doping control officers and our tribunal panel members. 
We've had two uh, doping control officers that have succumbed to the environment, uh, to the virus, and we've had one um, uh, tribunal panel member who has succumbed to the uh, virus. Uh, we are grateful and fortunate uh, that uh, all the other uh, people involved in SAGE, from the board to the staff, uh, to the staff have recuperated uh, from um, uh, being infected by the virus. Chair, if, the, if uh, I trust and I hope I've addressed uh, all the questions um, of the board, but um, there's no other comments from uh, Fahmi or Anke, I think. Uh, that's our attempt at addressing the questions that were directed at us. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Khalid. Um, I'm trying to check. I was also writing, but uh, members, uh, if you think that uh, you still want to do follow-ups or we are feeling that your question is not yet answered. This is the time I'm seeing the hand of Honorable Marlingozi. Uh, that's the only hand that I'm seeing. Honorable Marlingozi. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it to, to you, DJ. Um, uh, you'll assist. Yes, Honorable Marlingozi. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you uh, for the explanation. Um, still, I I would believe that uh, SAID's uh, main uh, uh, response is, is to look at, at the dra drug-free spot, and I believe that uh, the the, um, the what what these other guys want to 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 infuse in 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 the Casper's blood system is a drugs and and the sage i think uh, it, it would be proper for for say to also to 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 have a um a, you know a, a, a what you call the, the a position as to what they what they think about not not personal but as uh, as an organization so i think that uh, it, it, it's not uh, very uh, you know I, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't think that it, it is um, very uh, you know positive for for says to say they don't have anything to say about that first of all uh, says is, is is a south african organization that pushing for drug free all right um maybe uh, you know your explanation got lost in my english interpretation uh maybe you know what what do you mean that uh, you had to audit yourselves after access responses you know can you just uh, uh, let me know about that, but maybe I got lost in that. Um, another one is uh, of the the this um, the, the 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 testing programs that that you said you have. Um, I want to find out, uh, you know, what 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 specifics are you looking at from these specific ath athletics uh, and 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 so far, which sporting codes are you talking about? That, that are mostly you know, affected by, by these uh, doping uh, systems. And um, you, I, I heard you talking about, you know, the, the uh, SAIDs, you know, had, had uh, uh, ways and means of, of dealing with, with these, um, you know, uh, doping control processes, but you deal with, with, with the, the, the I'm looking, looking at it, you know, are you saying that uh, these doping control processes are for the elite? Uh, you know, athletics or what? So, can you make it clear that it is not for for the people on the ground, but it is for the the the, the elite? Thank you. Um, before uh, I'm giving back to you, uh, say it's leadership, DJ, maybe uh, let me give you. I was thinking that I'll be giving you uh, at the end, but as question have uh, been emerged, let me give you a chance, DJ. Thank you. Well, maybe Chairperson, uh, thanks. Uh, no intention to disrupt your, no, 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 your no, directing no of the program. No problem. Um, I think there was a there was a question that was asked uh, directly uh, to the department about the appointment of the the board. Uh, Honorable Nondaba is correct. Uh, it follows exactly the same 
and uh, this board uh, currently who has been doing a, a great job will in fact uh, be having the expiry on the uh, near 2022 because it's a five year they were appointed in 2017 if i'm correct so um, then there will be advert and maybe that will be then the opportunity to to try again and ensure that there is a balance in terms of a uh, gender representativity uh, on the issue of the partnership with basic education, we, we take what Honorable Chairperson have said um, uh, in this regard, uh, so that um, indeed if we nip this in the bud and our children are not forced to, um, to take um, a doping um, uh, as a part of their lifestyle uh, to perform at higher level, we do need to deal with this at the level of school. Uh, but sometimes learners are pushed to that level because either schools or teachers want high performance or even parents want a great success uh, for their children, but then they destroy the future of the children if they teach them how to dope or to cheat the system. So we... we be Let me take uh, it back uh, to the presenters. Uh, to take the follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, if you want to address the order. Uh, to um, to address, um, Honorable Mar Martin was his follow-up question on the or on auditing ourselves again. Um, the AGSA is external. They come in and audit what has happened already and they identify what, what um, they feel is wrong and what they feel is not adequate. What internal audit is, is they are ongoing throughout the financial year. And they are here to assist with process improvements in that they will identify where the entity falls short and recommend ways to improve those shortcomings or to fix them so that when AGSA comes again to audit, we do not have repeat findings. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Anke. Okay. Uh, Chair, the comment uh, on the uh, uh, Castor Semenya position is noted, uh, and I will table um, the uh, Honourable Member's comment uh, at the board meeting, and the board uh, can take a decision on whether we should formulate uh, a policy position on uh, Semenya. Um, with respect to testing, um, uh, the doping control test, um, as uh, mentioned with the uh, by the general manager, we do between 1,600 and 2,000 tests uh, per annum. Uh, one test costs in the region of 4,500 a rand, so we can't afford to test at every level um, uh, of sport or every match that's played or every uh, track uh, track and field or athletic event that happened. Um, sport is categorized in terms of what we refer to as doping risk profile. So you get a high, medium, and low risk sport with respect to the doping risk. And that's how we allocate uh, our resource, testing resources. Uh, so yes, a club uh, football match uh, will not be subjected to testing, but a, a PSL match or a Bafana match will be subjected uh, to testing. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's not about um, um, rural versus urban, but about the level of uh, sports competition where testing resources are allocated. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you so much, um, honourable members. Uh, I'm taking this opportunity to thank the leadership uh, of the of SARS to come at this time in the evening. Surely they were having their own uh, things during the day, um, but they've respected the committee when you have done changes. As this parliament also, we did uh, have a motion on Castas Mania's issue. Uh, we know even international, uh, countries, they are supporting uh, and 
the campaign of Castasmania. And uh, as we are saying, uh, Honorable Marlingos felt that uh, you must add your voices, but not as your uh, one of your your mandate, uh, as you have said. But uh, I'm 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 very happy that as this parliament through this committee, uh, we didn't debate once, we didn't put motion. So once, so I'm 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 happy that uh, international countries are, are are doing that, and maybe as we are saying that you don't know about your good self as individuals because you have got a mandate, and you know your mandate, and if something is it's out of your mandate, uh, that's how you respond. But uh, I do appreciate that in your mandate, surely everything was seen happening. And honorable members, uh, there's uh, somebody called in this collective ONG. Uh, it's a young somebody that he impressed some of us uh, when it did come. Uh, here in this um, seats, uh, we, we may uh, reflect one other time, if we do have the time, that it seats where it was, especially on this question of invoices, it did uh, uh, improve. Uh, surely he is not working alone is working with the collective. Please do improve in whatever gaps that members are seeing that we still have gaps. But um, as Honorable Denise was saying that uh, he is impressed and surely even other members, they are seeing that you are getting there. Uh, by those words, I will, I will say that uh, Honorable, your excellent judge, uh, I don't know, I've done my closing remarks. Uh, I want that you must say something and then I'll, I will say that the meeting is adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Really, there's, there's nothing more for me to say, except to thank you again for giving us the opportunity to come and, and, and present our, our I can't hear, Chairperson. Hey, I'm struggling. Honorable, to hear. Honorable Judge, unmute. Oh, hey, hey. did you? Can you hear me now? <laughs> we are the one country. I've come closer to the screen now. Can you hear me? Still not. <laughs> A little bit yeah, better, but very soft. A little chair. bit, but you are very soft. I don't know what is happening. Okay, maybe I was too close to the screen. And now? Mm. Yeah, it's better. Is it, is it better? Oh, no, Dennis. Is it better uh -uh. now? I can no. hear, but it's still soft, but we can hear now. Thank you, Jane. But it's still soft. Okay, okay. okay. I, I, no, I was saying I wasn't going yeah. to say anything more other That's than to, to, to confirm our thanks for you to invite us to come and present our performance plan. So all we can say this late stage of the night, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. That's how we, we end our salaries. <laughs> COVID-19 COVID made uh, this happen uh, a day almost we can have three to four meetings out of the parliamentary work and organizational mm -hmm. work. Thank you so much. Also, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you to Thanks. everybody. To the judge. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Bye. members. Thank you. Judge and the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, colleagues. Nice evening. Bye.
Bye, Gigi. Bye. Bye.